Welcome to the show. This is What's Your Story. My name is Catherine Mwangi. We're here at the Savannah in Kitengela. Our story today is a young man, Richard Turere, 22 years old, invented lion lights when he was only 12. So his is the kind of story that this day just calls for because he's young, he's passionate, full of spirit and personality, and we just need to go get to the bottom of it and find out how did a 12-year-old invent lion lights? This is where I live. I live in Kenya, at the south parts of the Nairobi National Park. Those are my dad's cows at the back, and behind the cows, that's the Nairobi National Park. Nairobi National Park is not fenced in the south where I live, which means wild animals like zebras migrate out of the park freely. My community, the Maasai, we believe that we came from heaven. A boy from six to nine years old in my community is responsible for his dad's cows. And that's the same, same thing which happened to me. So I had to find a way of solving this problem. And the first idea I got was to use fire because I thought lions were scared of fire. But I came to realize that that didn't really help because it was even helping the lens to see, to see through the cow shed. So I didn't give up, I continued. And the second idea I got was to use a scarecrow. I was trying to trick the lens that I was standing near the cow shed. But lens are very clever. <laughs> <laughs> they will come the first day and they see the scarecrow and they go back. But the second day, they'll come and they say, this thing is not moving here, it's always here. <laughs> so <laughs> it jumps in and kills the animal. So one night, I was walking around the cow shed with a torch. And that day, the lions didn't come. And I discovered that lions were afraid of a moving light. What an inspirational speech. Richard Turere, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Catherine. You look amazing. A sure link, a sure link. Shaling, Shaling, what does that mean? It means thank you so much. Oh, yeah. nice. Yeah. So I have to tell the audience, when I got here, I, I definitely wasn't dressed like this. This has been borrowed from a very kind lady in this compound. When I saw you, like you are meant to outshine. We look at the choma. We don't even try. As my size, eh. this is our casual dress. It's natural, eh? I could have longed any choma. At least now we are, we are flowing. So this is courtesy of Richard and his family. Thank you so much. But congratulations on your inventions, Lion Lights. This young man came to the limelight a few years ago when he invented Lion Lights. And you have been celebrated globally. Like, nema kuna country ujaenda? makeup. What is happening on your head? <laughs> so what I have on my head is a red ochre. Mm -hmm. It's usually worn ceremoniously. Oh. So to just show, so only Maasai Morans usually wear this red ochre. Uh -huh. So this is a ceremony for us as oh, Lion Lights and, and, and Richard Tuere. So that's oh. why I have worn it. So when there's a ceremony, yeah. you do that? Somebody celebrate. Okay. Yeah. And only Maasai Morans? Uh, only Maasai Morans. Who is a Maasai Moran? So Maasai Moran is someone between um, now the age where you get married, before, before you go to marriage. Uh -huh. Now after the initiation period where you become now a man, uh -huh. and considered as a man. Uh -huh. Before now you marry off, that, 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 that gap between there yes. is now you are a Moran. Okay. So you invented this when you were how old? I invented Lion Lights when I was just 12 years old. 12? Yes, 12 years ago. 12, oh. yeah. <laughs> Okay, yes. give us a story. What motivated it? Uh, so I started Lion Lights. If you look at where we are right now, yeah. we are just uh, at the southern parts of the Nairobi National Park. Mm -hmm. So this is an area full of wild animals. So this is a place where if you come from the busy Kitengela area, yeah. five minutes you're in the middle of the savannah, there's yes. animals. Ooh. So I, I grew up here and, and like any other Maasai boy, I used to take care of my father's cattle mm. and growing here, living so close to the Nairobi National mm -hmm. Park, we had attacks at night. Oh, yeah. So okay. Th the issue is that um, between the park and the community, mm -hmm. there's only a river. Mm -hmm. So the, the park is not really fenced. Okay. It's not fenced. There's only just a, a, a river, a permanent river. So what happens is that um, animals usually don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. 
animals, I'm talking about uh, zebras, I'm talking about buffaloes. So usually they find this uh, communal land mm -hmm. as shelter for them. Oh, so see. what they do is, they're very clever. Yeah. During the day, because they can see, yeah. they go to the park, they graze, they graze. And in the evening, they cross over the sides. To come now to you? Yes. Now, if you actually walk outside at night, yeah. buffaloes come right close to our fences. What? To the doorstep. No. Yes, because <laughs> that's the way to just keep themselves safe from oh. these animals. But when they do that, yeah. they also bring the lions to us because now the lions are left in the park okay. and they're not fed. Okay. So they come this side uh -huh. looking for, for food. For food. And now they find the sleeping Maasai cattle ah, <laughs> as easy prey. Right. Yeah. So Whew. yeah, so when when growing up as yeah. a, a Maasai boy, yes. um, there was always a challenge of human wildlife conflict uh -huh. in my community. But it wasn't very severe like yes. how it is right now. So now you find that when now around like twenty twelve uh -huh. it was very severe human wildlife conflict. I think Everyone knows, like yeah. this Kitangela area is yeah. very notorious, known for human wildlife conflict. <laughs> so wait, Richard, wait. So when the big five would come, because clearly you had the pleasure of just interacting with the animals, yes. but the problem here is that they were coming and uh, doing majabus to your cattle. Yes. And for a Maasai family, cattle is like Oh everything. yes, oh my God. So actually, yeah. the Maasai actually believe that we came from heaven with all the cows and oh. all the land. That's oh. why, like, if I go to, if I go to, for example, the States now, yeah. and I see cows in Texas, uh -huh. those cows are mine. <laughs> you have possessed the cows in Texas. So all the cows in the world are ours. They are my size. Apart from that, uh, livestock and, and cattle is our way of life. It's, right. It, they are our livelihoods. Yes. They are our ATMs. They are our saving cars, you know? They are saving. That's mm. how we store our money. Hey. But at, at right now, if I get money... Yeah. I go to the market and I buy cows. That is the wealth, the wealth of the Maasai yeah. people. And wealth is measured for us in terms of like cattle, yes. the number of cattle, yeah. and also a family. You have ah. a big family and you have big cattle. Yes. You're rich. And land. Yeah, and land. Umefika. Umefika. Hey. Okay. <laughs> so when you when you find uh, in cases where like, the lands come and they kill uh, mm. your cattle and everything, yes. Yo, that's disastrous. Like that's someone like stealing your wealth, you know, mm. someone taking your, all your money. Mm. It's like you waking up show and you go in your ATM it's empty your and money. you left money and last left night money and in the morning there's no that's money hey so at 12 years old it was something that was so persistent yes. that you just decided there has to be a solution yes this community for example mm -hmm. we had a lot of animals killed mm -hmm. by by lions and everything we had lions we had hyenas and everything but now the responsibility of having to look after my father's cows yes. is what really pushed me to finding this Solution. solution. Yes. It, it became as a, it started off as a local, a local problem uh -huh. here, but it went on becoming a global solution. Yes. So now because now we have lion lights uh, all over. Yes. All over the world. All we have lion lights in Argentina. Mm. We have lion lights in, in, in India mm -hmm. for tigers. Mm -hmm. So what started off as a as a Kitangela story yes. now went to become a global solution. Yes. yes. So what was it? So what does lion lights do? So uh, I want to take you back. Mm -hmm. To when the when they now buffaloes come, <laughs> when the buffaloes come to your doorstep now and they're there, what happens is um, when when these animals like the zebras and the buffaloes come this side, mm -hmm. the lions are left in the park, not fed. Uh -huh. the, they come to the communal land, uh -huh. and when they come to the communal land, yes. they find our sleepy cows as easy prey. <laughs> they attack the cows at night. You find that uh, you find that before lion lions we never used to sleep. Really? Yes, we never used to sleep. We used to take turns to uh. look after the cows. Because you would go sleep one minute like this, lion in Mifika. So, Ikifika, come out, you're the one on duty that night. What do you do? You chase it. You and chase a lion? Yeah, you chase a lion. And if you have to, you have to, then you have to spare it. You know where to aim? Yeah. Are you seeing how, are you seeing how <laughs> my eyes want to drop? So, it's so yeah. fascinating for me. So, you see a lion and you actually go to, to save, save your cow. cow. So many lions have been clear, uh, killed here. How do you work together with KWS? Because the lions, you know, that's their, they protect them. And then there's the Maasai community saying, your lions are not coming to my cows. Not to my cows. Uh -huh. So th th there's, there's uh, this particular area, 
uh, the KWS has been working here for over, I think, even before I was born. Okay. Because it's an area, it's a dispersal area. Right. It's, a, it's an area where animals come during the the, the dry, the wet season, they ah. breed here, they go back to the park. So this area has been really almost like a protected area. Right. But it's just that the community lives here. So the ah. KWS has, has been working here. Right. But there hasn't really been a sustainable solution to address the issue. Right. And that is why Lionless came in now. Uh -huh. So when when now the when the when the lions now come and they kill the, the animals <laughs> and now Richard Turere is a boy who is now responsible responsible to look after his father's cows because that's how it is for the rest of the people in the community you grow up you grow up by the time you're 9 years old you are you are charged you are charged to go out and and look after the cows and you have to make sure they're safe because when your dad comes he'll ask you uh -huh. Where were you when my cow was killed by a lion? Where were you when this happened? So So how do you do it? Like like do you like jump up when you have a spear? Like like what's 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 the pose? Becoming a Maasai warrior is, is hard. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy. Uh -huh. So um let me tell you my story, my personally my personally my story. Yeah, sure. So you know now with the whole human wildlife conflict, lions would come here, they kill the cows, they'd go back, it was a whole uh, uh, issue. When growing up, I was I was really fascinated. I really love technology. I really love technology. I was that young boy at the age of like nine. I was breaking things here yeah. at home. Yeah. My mom, I used to fight her with her every day. I would, she would buy a TV, <laughs> I would open it the next day. <laughs> because I just wanted to see what was inside the, the TV, what was inside the TV. You were curious. I was just, I had this very curious mind when, yes. I, was, uh, when I was young. Yes. So I used to break things, I used to uh, put them back, and that is how I, I really taught myself things. By breaking things and putting them back, I started teaching myself uh, about electronics and right. everything. I was, a, I was a boy where, like, if you're if your radio broke or your phone broke they in the community, you. Yeah, they bring it to me. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you charging them? No, no, not really. It was just like I was just having fun. I was, right. I was just having fun. Okay. So by doing that, I really started learning a lot. Yeah. Started learning a lot, and, and also had that uh, curious mind to just go out there and learn more. So one day I was just sitting around, mm -hmm. and I was like, "This conflict has mm -hmm. been there. Like, how, how? What is the other ways we can look at this? What is the other ways we can do this?" I remember one of the things that I started doing yeah. was very simple. I used to light up uh, fires around the cow shed. Uh, I used to collect car tires. Uh -huh. the, you know, when you use your car and it's yes. spoiled, I used to collect them. Uh -huh. And I would light them around the uh -huh. cow shed. Because, like, you know, there's that, uh, there's that uh, notion to come, but the lions are afraid of fire. Yes. I mean, used to light up the fire. Uh -huh. It didn't work. They're not afraid of They're fire. They're not afraid of fire. Eh. They're not afraid of fire. Uh -huh. You know, actually, my mom was making fun of me. She was telling me that, ah, uh -huh. So, I was like, uh, so I was like, so I was like, so the other thing was, I started to do it after the fire didn't work. I used to plant scarecrows around uh, the cow shed. So, okay. like, you're tricking the lion that yes. you're there. Yes. Hey, it worked for a few days, uh -huh. but now also lions are very smart. I've oh. come to know that lions are very smart. Okay. They would come, they would realize that. Ah, uh, we see you too. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the whole time. <laughs> the whole yeah, time. Yeah. So it didn't work. It worked for a few days and then the lions got used to it. Mm. There's something interesting and it was very something very simple. Okay. And um, you know when you used to walk around, like when you used to take turns to go look after the animals, the lions don't come. So I think I why don't these lions come? Uh -huh. It's because they see us walking around. For example, for you right now, uh -huh. if you have your garden uh -huh. and you're trying to chase away animals that are come to eat your garden, yeah. so you walk with a normal touch. Uh -huh. yes. that, that's the only way the animals would know that you're there. Yes. Your presence is there. Yes. So I was like, ah, the only reason why these lions don't come is because they can see that I'm there. Uh -huh. And the only way they see that I'm there is because they can see my flashlight uh -huh. and they can see my movement moving around. I was like, hmm. hmm. Now, why don't I, why don't I find something that can move that torch instead of me? Me and then enjoy my sleep. <laughs> Oh my God! That is how Lion Lights started. Lion Lights is as simple as that. There's nothing, it's not rocket science. It's nothing, it's nothing hard. We are waiting to hear rocket science ah, stuff. Ah, ah. And that is, that is a problem that we have. We usually we think that the biggest problems in the world should be fixed with really complex uh, solutions. Uh -uh. Mm -mm. We just need to look at it at a very down basic, basic level. Basic level. Yes. So the idea of Lion Lights is that um, the lions now know that someone is there. How do we now move this light? So I sat down and I was like, how do we do this? Mm. 
at 12 at years 12 old. Years old. Mm. And I was like, hey, kwa gari ni kwa mataya gari moving na kanga tu hivi. Yeah. But kuna ile time moja na moving hivi. And in ticket box na ndio gari kitaka mm. ku indicate mm. this side and this side yes. in indicate hivi. Yeah. So that's a moving light. That's mm. the first thing I thought about. Mm-hmm. And I was like, ah, let me get myself an indicator box. I went to the junkyards, I got a <laughs> indicator box. <laughs> I got an indicator box nikafunga. Mm. At that time I didn't even have a solar. I had a battery. My dad had this old car. Uh-huh. Ilikuwa na msumbua na engine. Uh-huh. Akachukua akasema, "Ah, hii battery ndio inanisumbua." Akachukua hii battery akaeka kwa nyumba. Uh-huh. Took that battery nikaichaji. Sasa nilikuwa nikafunga nayo sasa on the on the car shed. So when I when I now I started rigging the lights. And now the lights now are moving because the indicator box is there. Yes. The lights are just moving like this. They're just moving like this. Yes. Worked for the first day. Worked for the second yeah. day. I was like, eh, hey, these lights are working. And my mom was like, eh, hey, it looks like your lights are working. <laughs> uh-huh. So the idea is, line lights are just purely moving lights. So, I mean, now we've, we've gone on to re- redefine the system mm-hmm, and everything. Mm-hmm. But the idea of line lights started because we, I created lights that mimic someone's movement. Yeah. And they trick lines that someone is there when yeah. there's actually no one. Yeah. Yeah. So to them, yeah. even today, yeah. we are about 10 years now. Yeah. A decade, yeah. whole decade. Yeah. To lions, they always think that ah, there's someone called so Obama. There's there. someone in that home who is awake and is looking after his animals. So I can't go there. But actually, in reality, there's no one. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah. And this is what it is. So this is how it is. Mm-hmm. So when we started, when I started lion lights, it was really, really, really rough. Okay. It was really rough. I told you I had a battery, and now I had I collected some few wires. The bulbs I was using for the, you see now how you have this nice, really nice bulb? Yeah. I was using just normal indicator boxes. I was mm-hmm. just using small, you know, the broken flashlight. Now if you have a torch that yeah. is broken. Yes, yes, yes. I would just remove that uh, torch here bulb. The head. I just, you'll just, I'll just put it on the homestead. It was very rough and it was not even sustainable enough because at the times that I'd install it, yeah. even here at our homestead, they just used to break up, <laughs> break off every day, every day. So I would even I would not even travel because if I go anywhere yeah. and sleep over and it develops issues, mm. it's evil. Mm-hmm. But then now I now after after now I we known that the lights are now working. Yeah. Now I now started on a journey mm-hmm. to just pursue something that was really more sustainable. Right. It's not been it's not a it's not been an easy journey. Yeah. Uh, because now, obviously now I didn't really have that much knowledge. Yeah. I was a twelve year old. You're a baby at that uh, at point. Twelve year old. Yeah. And then at that time, same time, a lot was happening. I want to take you the whole story. Please do. Whole story. <laughs> a lot was happening at that mm-hmm. time. So I met. Li- so now at the time. So the, now the lights are working at yes. my home. Yeah. And then at the same time, there was now a lot of conflict in this mm. community. So and there was there was a lot of uh, NGOs, organizations. They're trying to find solutions. Mm-hmm. I can't really. I, and I want to share you th- this to you. Like. The other time, there was actually NGOs with uh, with a very big funding. Like uh-huh. you find uh, an NGOs with like a lot of money, yeah. And they would go and sit on a boardroom, uh-huh. people with PhDs, doctors, uh-huh. and they'd be like, "Ah, let's work a fence, uh-huh. let's work a fence from around the park." And you sit there like, "How is that sustainable enough? Don't we see lions running around in Kibera?" So like for me, I was like, "This is something that works, and we have to get everyone to know about lion lights." So how did you get people to know about it? So that's what I was saying. I was saying like, and I was twelve years old yeah. at that time. So at that time, I I went to school. I just used, I was in primary at that time. I yeah. was in primary school. Where did you go to primary school? I went to a very local school. Okay. It's just here. It's just here. Okay. I went to a primary school just here. Uh-huh. It's called Mbakasi Primary School. Okay. So at that time, I would just on the weekend I would do a few tricking of mm-hmm. the line lights, and then the Monday I would read more. How do I do this better? Wow. And then, surprisingly, mm-hmm. that time, mm. uh, Dr. Paula Kahumbu, who is now the CEO of Wildlife Direct, yes. uh, at that time she was working on a research about lions, uh-huh. particularly in this community, because she was also working to find a solution for the community and okay. everything, because the ch- challenge was very big. Right. She had even go as far as uh, Tanzania mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. seek more uh, help and advice from them. Our brothers from Tanzania were doing better. Mm. They had a fence. <laughs> they had a life fence, mm-hmm. so for them it was a fence, uh, but now it's a growing fence, right. like how you can plant a growing fence. Yeah. So they actually went and got those uh, scientists uh-huh. and experts 
So they brought them here in the community. Mm -hmm. They were like, we want you guys to help this community of Mbakasi mm -hmm. uh, to share what you guys are doing there with the life friends. Maybe they can implement it here. So when they, when they came, mm. I mean, the first person you go to is the chief area. Right. You explain this so that he can tell the rest of the community. Right. So they came to my chief, uh, to my chief, and they told him, mm. ah, this is what we've brought and yeah. everything. And, he, and my chief looked at them and was like, there's this guy, wow. there's this guy from the Tureri family, mm. small boy, there's, I'm, I've been hearing about his story. There's yeah. some... Uh, that are working, you know, the chief was the one now taking, his name is Nixon Pamisa. Okay. He's now, he's the one who's recording um, the predation around the community. Mm. And he noticed the trend that in the last uh, month, my, our home is actually the closest to the park, actually. Okay. It's about oh, wow. 50 meters. Okay. Our home was the closest to the, to the park, but had the least number of uh, conflicts. conflicts. Yes. So he was like, something is off, you know. That's how he started now following the story of Lion Lights. So he told them that this is boy, Quaturere, he's doing some things and it seems to be working. Yeah. So he, he, he told them, let's go and check him out. Yeah. So they came here and I was actually not in, at home. Yeah. I was in school. In school, yeah. So they came here, they talked to my parents. Uh -huh. I was like, ah, you're my tired Richard. They're on, the, <laughs> they're on the fence. You only see them at night. You know, like you wouldn't see, you wouldn't even know landlords are in this home because they work at night at only. At night, yeah. So they waited for me. I came from school. Uh -huh. And I was like, ah, yeah, the lights, yeah, the lights, they're working. This is how they did it. Uh -huh. This is how they work and everything. And oh, well, they, were, they were so amazed. Mm. They were like, you know, does it really work? Mm. And the, at first, you know, actually they doubted. They were like, oh, how can a 12-year-old think of this? Yeah. Did anyone help you like yes. do this? Yeah. Did um, you read it from anywhere? Yeah. So they actually went and they actually got technical people. They were like, you have to come and ask this kid yeah. to know if he knows what he's talking about. Yeah. So they brought people and the people were like, yeah, this kid knows what he's talking about. <laughs> uh -huh. So fast forward, um, fast forward, uh, uh, they went back and now they, this whole story now started just blowing up. Yes. Slowly by slowly, yes. it started getting uh, attention. Yeah. Um, All these researchers, uh, are, researchers coming are coming to here it. to really just yes. understand how this young boy do this and this and yeah. this. And now at the same time, me, I was just in school, normal. I didn't know anything would happen. And now uh, the community around here, they would see our lights at night. They, yeah. they came and they're like, ah, Richie, can you do this for us? Yeah. I was like, yeah, just let's buy the equipment on the weekend. Now I'll do it for you. At that time, I did around 17 homes. Wow. Myself. Wow. So this uh, village you come at night, yeah. it's like it's like there's a party. <laughs> <laughs> People are <laughs> lights are flashing. They're flashing at yeah, night. Yeah, now I transformed the whole savanna. Now it's, it looked like it was crazy. It like must everyone be is just going like this. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. And the animals have and, been staying uh, away. Uh, the animals are now sl sl sleeping. Yeah. So every homestead that we've installed, yes, I installed our first system here. Yes, in yes. April 15, 2012, mm. we've never had any, any issue with lions. We've never had lions in this compound. Compound. Yeah, my gosh. We've never had lions in this compound, yeah. and it's the same for anyone who's mm. ever had lion li uh, lion conflict. Yes. Once they got lion lights, they've never had any conflict at all. At all. Eish. Yes. I'm coming back to your story. We have to take a very short commercial break. Don't go too far. When we come back, hopefully we see some lions. <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> After the break. Got many offers to go to the States to study, but then my passion is in conservation. And I really felt like I would I wouldn't I wouldn't get I wouldn't go to the States to study conservation. Okay. Because even the students in in, in America come here for for field work. Welcome back. It's What's Your Story. I'm Catherine Mwangi here having an incredible conversation with Richard Turere. Yes. <laughs> I, I love pronouncing that name. <laughs> say it. There's a way you say it. Richard Turere. Turere. Yes. Okay, cool. So Richard is an inventor. Actually, he's the youngest person to be recognized and commended and awarded at a global level for inventing lion lights. And as you have heard in part one, in case you missed it, you'll catch it on YouTube. But just to take you back he invented this because where he lives which is in this area we are we're just here out in the bundus you know we, we won't give it a name 
uh, there was human wildlife conflict and at 12 years old that's 10 years ago that tells you he's only 22 uh, he had to find a solution to keeping the lions away and he did at 12 what were you doing at 12 <laughs> No judgment from me, just something to think about. So Richard, 17 homes, you installed for them at 12 years old, uh, Lion Lights. I love the name, it's so simple, it's yeah. so to the point. <laughs> and and you start, suddenly your story started to get amplified when all of these people came and they saw what you're doing, they proved it to be correct. So how did that um, move to a global level? Yeah, I mean, like after the whole story now uh, got this much attention. Yes. Yeah. Um, it, I would say that Lion Lights really changed my life. Oh. Yeah, because um, now after um, I'd made Lion Lights and people really knew that this is the guy who did this mm. stuff and this, this is an invention that is working. Um, the first thing that happened to me was that um, I got a scholarship. Oh. Yeah, I got a scholarship to go to one of the best schools in Kenya. Which one? Brookhouse International School. <laughs> okay, yeah, so hold on. You moved from here. The school that was here, what was the name of that school? Uh, Mpakasi Primary School. Uh -huh. Where you used to walk, all the way to Brookhouse. That is a story. I want to hear that the second. Story. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, uh -huh. um, when I got the scholarship to go to Brookhouse, I really didn't know. I didn't even know what Brookhouse was. I didn't even know how Brookhouse was. So, the first day I, I got to Brookhouse, yeah. and um, I was like, this is not even Kenya. Like, <laughs> I hadn't even gone past Kitengela. You know, the, I usually used to go to Kitengela to take my battery to get charged and I would carry it back here. <laughs> and then now I was all of a sudden in Brookhouse. Mm -hmm. And you're not in Kenya. And I was like, no, this is, doesn't feel like I'm in Kenya. It doesn't feel like I'm in Kenya. And then I was being told that this is now going to be your school. It was culture shock. Culture shock. What did you see? Um... I, uh, let me tell you one story. I, I, well, first day, the first week I went to Brookhouse, mm. it was, I think, one of the most embarrassing moments in Brookhouse. <laughs> <laughs> I never used to go, I like, um, we know when you, they used to serve food, I didn't know any other food on the menu. <laughs> Apart from? You know, like Brookhouse, is, their menu is like almost like five, five, star five, hotel. five star hotel, you know? So I would, I would go on the food and I would check and I, would, I wouldn't find any food that I knew. Okay. You understand? So I just used to, how I remember a whole month, I think I used to just eat bread and milk <laughs> because I wasn't sure what I was going to eat. And then now also, if you look at the education, uh -huh. it was really different. Yeah. I mean, I, was, I, I went in a government school. Mm. I went in a government school. I, as much as I was the smartest kid in the, in, in the savannah here, yeah. there, it was really different. Yeah. It was really different. I was doing a different curriculum. Uh -huh. Yes. I was, um, didn't even knew much English. <laughs> oh, didn't even you knew speak much. so well. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> at that time, at that time, I, I now, like, uh, more opportunities started coming. Oh. And that is where the opportunity for to speak at TED came. So there was a talent search in, in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. So Nairobi was hosting this TED, TED, uh, TEDx talent search. Yes. So usually like when TED hosts uh, a big TED, yes. they have a talent search where they get now the rural talents to take them to the global stage. Mm. So Nairobi was the host. Mm -hmm. And uh, Paul had suggested that I should, I should try. Mm. Just Richard, go try in this yeah. talent search. Yeah. So I went there, I could... I could I could barely speak a word in uh, good in English. Yeah. Um, I, I told my story. It's mm. my story. So no one knows it better than me. That's that's the, that's the challenge that I took. It. I was like, this is my story. Even if I mess up, no one would know. Yeah. I went to the stage. Yes. I went to the stage. Yes. And surprisingly, people followed like this, like this. People loved the story, and then now after like two weeks. Um, I, I, I get this invitation. Richard Trudy, you have been one of the people selected for the global stage in Teto, in, in California. Yes. I was like, God. And what's the name of our friends? <laughs> <laughs> you have to have big puppies here. You have to have really big dogs here. Really? Yeah. Why? Is because there are lions in this area. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. So I was I was now selected for a big uh, stage. My God. In, in Ted. Yes. So I went to Ted. Uh, it didn't even take me long to prepare. I had the same attitude. I was like, this is my story. This is time to, to go and tell it. And how old were you when you went to California? That was just after one year. I was, I was discovered 2012, 2013, I was already in California doing a title. 13 years? Yes. Hey, 
Yeah. Kenya's youngest. Yes. <laughs> so, uh-huh. so I did a, I did a TED talk. I got a standing ovation. Mm. Yes. I got a standing ovation Ooh. for my TED talk. Yes. And after that, a, everything changed. It was just like Richard here, Richard there, Richard yeah. there. Yeah. But then for me, I was like, I left the work behind. Like now, I really was like, I really need to now go back and 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 finish what I started because now it, it wasn't. My intention was not to really get famous. Yeah. Actually, when I was making lights, it was that wasn't the intention. No. The intention was to help my community. Yeah. Live again peacefully with wildlife. Yeah, I, I, I excelled very well in Brookhouse, yeah. finished Brookhouse. Yes. I, I went to uh, Rwanda yes. for high school, mm-hmm. for sorry, for university. Mm-hmm. I just graduated the other day. Oh, well so, done. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> and how did you get to go to Rwanda? I got many offers to go to the States to study, but then my passion is in, in conservation. And I really felt like I, would, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't get... I wouldn't go to the States to study conservation. Okay. Because even the students in, in, in America come here for, co- for field work. So, and one thing I liked about the school that I went to, now African Leadership mm-hmm. University, is that um, I graduated with a conservation, uh, I did not only graduate with a, a conservation degree, but I also did leadership because it's a leadership university. Mm. So, and that is one thing that you, you need. We need, we need, we need leadership as, as yes. I needed that leadership yes. because I, I felt that um, to come and change some of the things that are happening here in this community, I really need to get that basic foundation, that strong foundation in leadership yeah. so that I can help some of the challenges that are here yes, in the community. Yes, and how do you lead people and that's so you needed that. I needed that. that. Insight, I needed yes. that. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And you graduated the other day. Yeah, I finished uh, uni the other day. Hey. I'm, I'm back here now in the community. Yes. Um, and uh, now we, we we've been we've been really working with line lights. Um, I just wanted to show you this. Yeah, please. This is um now after we went brokers. When I went to brokers, mm-hmm. um, one of the things that I was doing was just projects. Okay. Like I was now thinking of how do you how do we make this? You know now I used to get uh, customers used to call me. They're like ah Richard, this this thing is really working for someone else. How do we how do I how do I get these lights? Uh, you know, now at that time we, we the system was very raw. Uh-huh. We just used to have wires running around with a uh, solar panel and a battery and everything. Uh, it was just not practical. It right. was not pot- portable. You know, okay. for us, we are pastoralists and we move. We are nomadic. For example, if I install that system in our home, it, when the when the cows move, for example, like now in the drought season, the system is left behind. Ah. So it wasn't practical. Right. Hey. So I, I was like, I really wanted to come up with something that was yeah. more practical, yes. something that uh, if I have to move my cows, I go with it. Yes. Or if I'm in school studying, uh, someone needs lights, they can just go and install it for themselves. I don't have to be there. Ah. So, so this is one of the things that, this is one of the line lights. So that, you enhance uh, the innovation. This is what I announced with this. Mm-hmm. And um, this obviously, this one had challenges. This was like, this one had, this worked. Uh-huh. This one worked. Oh, it was just too big. Okay. It, it was too big because now for a Maasai who has, let's say, 150 cows, uh-huh. that would be a perimeter and you'd need like um, about 10 of this. Okay. To make one of this, the, the, the overhead cost was just too much. Okay. The cost was too much. Right. So I was like, ah, oh, we need to really get the best. Still the, finesse the, it. Still finesse it. Yes. Finesse it. And that's why we got to this. To this. Wait. The, so this came yeah to the, from this, this is the next level you should see what is behind this what is behind that you should see what, like the lights that are behind now this this fine one uh-huh. it was much bigger it would not even fit it would not fit in the boot of a car <laughs> it was bigger <laughs> so this is the end product of your yeah this is now what modification. we have modification this is now what we have this, this and, is, this and is now, so how, what powers this so this is uh, this is just a photo. Uh, this is a, a solar uh, cell. Oh. There's a solar cell here. Uh-huh. There's a. Um, there's a. Uh, this this is has sensors. Yes. So it just turns itself on, and you know how it works. Eesh. Yeah. It's just you just have to install this at your home. Set. Yeah. You can do it. Yeah. Yeah. You can just. Yeah, as a manual. So if depending on how big you want uh, your area. Yeah. You, you how many cattle you have. Yeah. It's it's an. Uh, how big the perimeter is, uh-huh. you'd be able to determine. For us, we do it uh, 30 meters uh-huh. light. Every 30 Every meters. Every 30 meters are light. So, so just a few of this, and that's and it. you're good to go. Yeah. If I tell you, if I tell you, um, one of the projects that the government used to do was uh, compensation. Uh-huh. It was so expensive. 
the government could not pay. Uh-huh. I have records of uh, uh, cows that have killed in uh, 2018, uh, 2009, 2008, 2007 that have not been paid. Even the uh, the government passed a, a law, the Act, the New Wildlife Act, for people to be compensated. It has never happened because the government doesn't have the money to pay. It was it was a very expensive affair because now, if a farmer loses a cow and he wants to be paid uh, per per market price, mm. it, it's so expensive. Yeah. But with uh, with a homestead, mm. if you're five thousand, you have three years of protection because this is three years guarantee. So are these things also in those farms you talked about in Texas? They're all over the world, basically. Yeah, so now we have limelights. We have limelights in Argentina. We have it in Tanzania. We have it in Namibia. We have it in Botswana. Yes. Yes. Young man. That story is actually much bigger outside Kenya. Surprising. How so? I don't know. It's just that limelight is really well known outside the world. Yeah. I'm very much known outside the world. Eish. Like outside Kenya. Eh. Many people know me. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Yeah. And you have written a book about it. Yes. Lion Lights. Yes. Tell us about the book. The thing is that um, what people don't know yeah. is that people know the Lion Light story now. Yes. Because they know that Richard made the Lion Lights mm. and the, the lights, uh, they, they protect the cows mm. and everything and the lions. But people don't really know. They don't know. They don't know the story about Richard. Yeah. They don't know like the the story, my own story, yes. like what I had to go through. Yeah. Some of the experiences, like embarrassments that I had in outside the world, doing other things like um, eating food for one month. That is, so people don't know. Yeah. They don't know those stories. Yeah. They don't know how uh, I persevered to to really get uh, to adapt to this uh, environment. So that's what, some of the things that are in, in that, that book. book. Yes. Yeah. People don't know how much uh, human wildlife conflict. Yes. Happen here. Yes. Yeah. And so the cons- conservation story as well. Yeah. So the book launches in August. Oh wow. Second. Oh. Yeah. yeah. But the book is already on Amazon, so you can get the book on Amazon. Okay. Tell us how. Yeah. How, yes. Yeah. You can go to Amazon. Write uh, Lion Lights uh, by Richard Turere. The book is there. You can pre-order right now. Oh. Yeah. So, eish, so w- are you publishing it locally? Of course no, not. It's not local. It's not local. It's not how <laughs> can it be local? You who but has been to all the platforms globally, how can it be publishing locally? The goal is actually uh-huh. the goal is actually to bring this story back here. And I'm really thankful that you came here. Mm-hmm. Because this is this is where it should start. Mm, it should, it's a birthplace should, of this it innovation. It should start from home. Yes. It should start from Kenya. This yes. is our own story. Ooh. This is our Kenya story. Eish. Do you understand? So I want to bring the goal is to bring that as much as we're not launching this book in Kenya, yeah. we're also going to do a Kenya launch. Ah, yeah. invite o- us for it. Yeah, we're also working with the publishers to yeah. do a Swahili version. Hey. Swahili version of the book. Yes. Yeah. So that's phenomenal. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. August the second. So that's just a few days from now. August the yes. second. Yeah. So um, I'm now gearing up mm. to, f- to go for the book launch. Yes. And a few uh, tours. Uh, <laughs> for the book. Young man. <laughs> You're only 22. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh, uh-huh. Yeah. But tell us about, I know you've been on so many global platforms and I want the young people watching to, to also get inspired by your story about uh, some of the platforms you've been on globally. Tell us. Uh, I've been to the TED Talk. Uh, I've been to the Global TED Talk yes. in California. Mm-hmm. I've been to the Let's Go Festival in Brazil. I have been to... I've been to Anzisha Price in Johannesburg. I've been to Lion Week in Hong Kong. I've been... When Jackma came here, I was a special guest. <laughs> Jackma is, is, Jack is my friend. He's your friend? Yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, yeah, I've, I, have, I, have, I, have been, I have been around the world. I've been around the world selling our good story that... Um, when I, it doesn't. It doesn't matter where you come from. Mm-mm. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't matter where your story starts. No. You understand? Yeah. But you have the control to hold on to that to your story. Yes. And and you don't have control where it starts. No. But you have the control where it ends. Yes. Yeah. And how it moves. And, and how it moves. Yes. So that is that is my goal. I want to I want to inspire people that you know I started from this really mm. very humble background. Mm. But yeah, where I've been to and the people that I've been with, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Hey, my God, who are you? <laughs> Do you have a Masai name, another one? You must have ten names. 
the stars have been smiling on you in your life. It's amazing. It's um, it's called um, believing in yourself. Mm. It's called perseverance. Mm-hmm. It's when you persevere, and and just being when when you don't give up. Mm-hmm. Basically, those are the things that define me. Yeah. I don't give up. I, I persevere. Yeah. And I just give my best. Yeah. I give my best. Yeah. Yeah. What can you tell me about your family? Like you know, we've talked about all this, and I haven't even talked about you know your your siblings, your yeah. parents yeah. growing up. You know, in that setting, what was that like? Actually, I have a very big family. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, my sons will understand this. <laughs> even, even I understand. Yeah. Know Masai. We're fifteen of us. Fifteen. Oh, yeah. Growing up was uh, growing up was I would say it was it was a challenge mm. because now, as you can see, like. People talk about global change and some people don't believe it, but you can see it for us. Like for us, it's first hand. It's happening to us mm-hmm. directly at, like this. Yeah. So the animals leave the green grass vegetation in the park and they come to yours. Why? So actually when it rains here yeah. uh, and it's also green this side, uh, grassland in this side is very, is very, is very uh, short because okay. we also have uh, uh, animals, our livestock Your own here, cattle, yes. our own cattle here. Yes. So this grass is usually very yeah. short, yeah. unlike the park. And this is usually a very good place for them to just come and breed during the wet season. But even right now, you might not even see them because it's very dry. Uh-huh. They go in the morning oh. to feed the whole day uh-huh. and then in the evening they come here. Because they come here in the evening because it's, this side is much safer because they are humans. The humans here, the dogs and barking around. Yeah. So they're very smart. Uh-huh. You know, they they stay there in the yeah. park and yeah. it's very bushy. Uh-huh. The lions uh, can uh, can grab. So they like staying with animals and and people. Yeah, they know that this side is safer. They know it. Oh my goodness. Yes. That is intriguing. Yeah. So it sounds like the way like you have dogs and cats who like to be with people. Yes. So even wildlife want to be where people are. Yeah, they, they know that uh, where there's, there's humans, yeah. there's, there's peace, because lions also don't come this side, yeah. Uh, yeah. That is amazing. You live in such a beautiful space. <laughs> so do you hold Thank bonfires you. here? Like, it looks like the kind of place bonfires. <laughs> I mean, uh, for, for us, uh, I think the only reason why you're seeing all that is because you probably come from Nairobi and now you're feeling like this is a really nice place to chill. So we were, we were born here, so there's <laughs> nothing new. <laughs> It's not, it's, it's it's not nothing new. new. We are if just I, feeling like, if wow. I, if I go to Nairobi yeah. and I see those uh, skyscrapers, uh-huh. I'm like, hey, nyumba ina kamzu. <laughs> yeah, but for us, No, yeah. but Nairobi doesn't even have skyscrapers. You've been to New York, you've been to California, you've been to Hong Kong, you've been to Brazil. Come on. I mean, you, you've been everywhere. Thank you. So when you go there, do you don't like this asaya? Oh, I do. Yeah? I do. What a juaje. What a let me tell you, hey. if there's one thing I am, I'm hey. very proud to be Maasai. Kabisa. Yeah. Ah, yeah. And then yeah, because yeah. the one who speaks English as good as you do. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. I think for them, they expect that maybe they will need a translator. Let me tell you, hey. there's always this uh, idea people have. They're uh-huh. like, ah, are you calling Maasai? Uh-huh. I mean, oh, Maasai ni kwejia ikelea tu. Trust me, me, I'm so Maasai. My both parents are Maasai, born Maasai Kabisa. Yeah. Yeah. We should have... We should have minds to tell us that a Maasai can also speak English. Yeah. We should have a mind that can tell us that a Maasai can hold a degree in, in the university. Yeah. yeah. I think most people don't, um, don't believe or accept that actually the, we have incredibly educated Maasais all over the world. We do. We it's do. just that they don't share their stories. We do. So very few share their stories, so we don't know a lot of them. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And it's the same for this whole country. Like I, t- I tell people that... Yeah. Um, we don't even have to talk about the Maasai. Yeah. We just have to talk about the young people in this country. Uh-huh. There's so much potential in this country. Mm. There's so much potential in this country. It's just that we are not really giving the support that is needed. What is now needed? Imagine, mm. Now imagine if someone had not discovered me. Mm. You know, we'd be fighting lions here. They would be almost extinct. There was a study that was done, yeah. and it had suggested that if the li- Maasai did not stop killing lions, yeah. lions would be wiped out. They would be extinct by 2025. That would be the, like just the it's a 20, few, few years, years from now, yeah. yeah. And then they you were, have saved them. They were being killed at a rate of 100 lions every year. Before lion lights, yes. What did you want to be at when you were growing up? Um, so, like growing up here in the savannah, you've seen so many planes flying here. Right. I was like, I wanted to be in a plane, you know. I've always seen myself up there. Okay. I was like, he's a man, I guess, I'm cool. 
I want to be inside them, you know. Mm. I, I really had the passion of just becoming uh, 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 becoming a pilot. Mm -hmm. But then I think growing up, I realized that maybe I actually didn't want to be a pilot. Okay. I wanted to be somewhere around the world. <laughs> you understand? So <laughs> I, 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 I never actually wanted to be a pilot. Maybe yeah. I just wanted to be around the world telling yeah. my story. Mm. And that is what... And you have been. I've been. So and you still are going to be. Yeah, so I think I'm living my dream now. Heesh. Yeah, being out there and inspiring young people. Yes. Yeah. And the young people here in Kenya, because what, what I heard from your story, which is incredibly phenomenal and inspiring to me, is that it was just a local problem, a problem in your homestead that prompted you to just think critically, what, what can I do? What can I do? Yes. Just a small, you know, we go looking for big problems yeah. to solve. You know what we forget is mm. that um, we are connected. We are connected. We are a connected world. You understand? Like even the problems that these people outside Kenya are facing, yeah. it's the same as ours. Yes. So when I, I made Lion Lights, it was only for this homestead actually. Yeah. Because I hadn't even thought first of my community. Yeah. I thought about my responsibility yeah. of looking after my father's cows. Yeah. And, and then after that, I realized that this could also be used for my, co my, my neighbor. My, now it from, went from my neighbor to my community. And then from this community, went to another community in Kenya. Yeah. And then it just shows you how we are so connected. And now Lion Light is being used even outside, yeah. outside um, Kenya. Yeah. It just shows how we are really yeah. interconnected. Yes. Let me tell you something interesting. Mm. Mm. Um, when Lion Light was made for predators, but do you know that we've actually tested lion lights on other species, like elephants? Mm -hmm. So it, down in Amboseli, we have a very big problem. Mm -hmm. So there are different types of human wildlife conflict. We have crop raiding, that is when elephants go on people's farms mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. clear. We have uh, livestock depredation, that's when... And then now we have now human wildlife conflict. Yes. That is when now you have a uh, human is injured or killed by an animal. So down there in Amboseli, we have a very big problem. Crop raiding is a very big problem. People down there are farming. Hey. Farming. So yes. you do a one acre of watermelon, and an elephant comes in and eats all the all the. And decides you are planting watermelon yeah. for them. Yeah. So yeah. someone was like, ah, this lion lights. Do you think they can work for elephants? I was like, let's try it. <laughs> let's try it. You know, like, uh -huh. let's do it. Yeah. We installed lion lights there. It worked. It worked. And now we have. Farms down in Amboseli, we're using lion lights. So it's just the name, lion lights. But actually, lion lights is, works for, for yeah. wildlife. It's yes. not only lions. lions. And that is why I was telling you that even in Argentina now, we're using it for pumas. Wow. Yes. They have a similar <laughs> problem. There's a community there that has livestock. Yeah. And a puma is very different from a lion. Yes. Yeah? yes. And in India, it's being used for tigers. Tigers. Yeah. It's just the name. Richard, you have <laughs> blessed my life today. I... <laughs> Thank you. I mean, you, you, as you, this is such a blessing. Your life is just such a blessing. Such a young age. Thank you. So much ahead of you, for you. <laughs> Thank you. Who do you look up to, by the way? Who are some of your most inspiring, you know, people that have helped uh, you? Who do you look up to? I, I honestly don't have to look uh, very far. Okay. Um, usually, the first person I look up to is my father. Mm. If you look at. It, you know how we are doing a story of Richard Turere yes. saving lions? Yes. My dad now was James Turere, the lion killer. <laughs> my actually my my dad is actually known as a lion killer. Like if I go if I usually go and introduce myself, uh -huh. my dad I introduce myself and I'm like I'm son of Turere. Uh -huh. He's very known. Yeah. In this Maasai community yeah. because he was like the number one lion killer. Yeah. And now his son is saving. <laughs> so son saving. Yeah. So they had to be balanced. Yeah. They had to be balanced in the family. No, I, it just happened. It was a coincidence actually. It was a coincidence. <laughs> It was even a coincidence, but yeah. like um, one thing I like, one thing I would say is that um, my parents are re have really been supportive, mm. have really been supportive, and being supportive is not even if they didn't financially help me. Yes, uh, they gave me room. I didn't give. Uh, they give me room to like be myself. Yes, like I didn't give you a story. Like yes. let me tell you, like <laughs> in one of the uh, like our home now, when I was doing you know line lights. Yeah. Let me tell you something, line yeah. lights. You see now how you do an album uh -huh. of like songs, uh -huh. and then one song is the hit song. Uh -huh. That's how Lion Lights is. I had done other projects, oh. and Lion Lights is the only you now. It was now the project that put me in the in the oh. limelight. So I done other things here in the, uh, at home. Yeah. I used to rig electric. Uh, you know, like you know how you open the mlang wave like this, uh -huh. and it just shocks you by a <laughs> So I used to do that to our family house here. Yeah? Mm -hmm. My dad like was like, "I nyumba to school So my dad built me a small house. 
by that time I was like I was like 12 you yeah. know I was living already I would live in, I would stay in my mom's uh house yeah. sleep yeah. but do my experiment outside in because your own my, house yeah my dad was just like yo you're going to chum at this house <laughs> you, you just need to move <laughs> you're going to move but then like even I remember when the first line lights work yeah now you know I used to carry the battery to Kitengela to get charged uh-huh. my dad was like I'll buy you a solar a solar panel wow, so my dad so bought me my it. first panel, a solar yes, panel yeah yes. so I feel like he's he's always been there he's always my parents have always been there to just even if like they don't have much to provide for yeah, me but but they've been present they've been present yes. they've been pro- they've been part of this story yes, they've been part of this I story I love it yeah. they must be so proud of you <laughs> they are very much they are. Yeah, very much proud <laughs> Oh, wow. Thank you so much for being on the show. This is incredibly inspiring. To the young people watching, this young man is 22. He invented this at 12. He's been all over the world and still traveling. He is now a published author a few days from now, launching his book on August the 2nd. And and after that, doing tours. Okay, he's, he's doing book tours again. All over the world, Jack Ma is his friend, and, and a couple of other people. What would you advise young people? Just inspire young people uh, to just get out of their skin and and do something with what they have. I wanted to speak to them as we wind up. Um, I don't have a lot to say because uh, I'm. I don't think I'm a motivational speaker. But <laughs> I can tell you for sure that if you really want to do something, just put your heads to it. Because for me, I knew for sure that I wanted to protect my father's cows because that is the responsibility that I was given. I did it with all my heart. So if you have something that you're thinking about, you're the only one who can change that. Even if you get any other support from anywhere else, yeah. you're the only, you're the first person to yes. to change the story. Yes. Yeah. So you be the one to, to do it. Yeah. Don't give up. No. In life, there are many challenges that yeah. come to us and we give up. Yeah. If I, if I decided to give up online like the first day, this would have not ha- worked. So having that perseverance to go on, even if when things don't look like they're going to happen, yeah. is what changes. Yeah. Yeah. And take risk. Yeah. Where there's no risk, there's don't, no reward. There's no reward. Yeah. Yeah. I ain't adding nothing to that. Thank you so much for being on the show, sharing your story. My pleasure. And and for tell mom, tell mom I'm going, I'm running away with this. <laughs> Tell mother I am gone. Okay. <laughs> but thank you for coming. Thank you so much. And thank you for watching. This this was just so amazing. It was so beautiful. And there's a plane about to interrupt this outro. So I better say goodbye before that happens. Ciao. <laughs>